Good afternoon, everybody. We are ready to start our next session. I'm Kiame Biondudi from the Carpet Bag Theater and a new member of the Mayor's Maker Council. And I'm happy to introduce Sean Pointer from Sean Pointer Photography. He's here to teach us the basics of product photography and I can't wait. Welcome, Sean. It's good to be here in front of you, even though I can't see you. Um, I'd like to thank the Maker City for having me and for you guys uh, for sticking around and helping me bear with me. I've been doing some power poses because I'm really nervous, so that could help. It, it might not help, who knows. Um, but the idea today is to um, take you through a few exercises and some tips and tricks and give you a list of gear um, to hopefully help you get started in your photography journey. It's a very kind of basic overview that I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you people will, you know, know what's going on already and you're already a good photographer. Some of you may need some tips and tricks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Bear with me for one second, please. There we go. Okay. That should be going here, great. All right, so I'm gonna first give you um, a gear list and then I'll do a few tips and tricks and then I'm gonna do uh, hopefully a live demo at the end if we get a chance and we'll try to photograph a few things together and we can kind of see how that works out and we can take some of these tricks and tips and put them into action. And I'm gonna stop saying tricks and tips <laughs> right now. Um, okay, so let's get started real quick. Um, and I'm gonna start with a, with a gear list here, um, just because as a photographer, that's like half my life is either thinking about gear or wanting more gear or trying to get rid of gear. So it's a very gear centric profession. And uh, I love to show and tell stuff. So let's, um, let's see if we can't get into that. Okay. And also, I just want to thank Google Slides for making these like crazy templates that are just like uh, the 80s, you know, um, exploded onto your screen. So I, I try to keep in that theme. And I've added a little link um, to a huge online retailer that I won't name. Uh, I made a little gear list uh, page that you can like find a list up on. It's all pretty cheap stuff. It's It's probably... This whole setup I'm going to show you is probably under $100. Um, and that will get you a pretty long way into getting your, you know, your, your feet wet into product photography. Um, and, and again, you can go crazy. You can buy a $1,000 worth of product photography stuff. But like I, I recommend starting slow, uh, getting the cheap stuff. And then if you want to add to it or get upgrades and stuff, do it later on. So anyway, okay, here, here we go. Let me, let me show you a few of these things. Number one, a little tripod for your camera, for your phone camera. These are really handy. This one was made before phones uh, became the size of books, and so it's a little bit, a little bit wiggly up here. But it works, and um, a lot of times, you know, if you're by yourself, you don't really, you don't have two hands, one for the camera, one to hold a light or a, a poster board or a reflector. So having something that you can put your phone on, and then uh, have two hands to either hold a light or hold a reflector or move stuff around kind of, you know, where you want it. It's really handy. And it's kind of obvious, but I just bought this like last year, I think. And so maybe it's too obvious, you know. Um, yeah, number one, that's great. Perfect. Number two, and this goes, this kind of goes with the remote control or the, with the tripod is a tiny little remote control for your, for your iPhone or Android for your phone. This little thing is great because when your camera's on the tripod, you can walk anywhere you want and you can you know, be holding your light or holding whatever and just click it and it just does it, you know, no big deal. It works and it's cheap, it's like $7. Okay, here's where it gets kind of fun. Um, two, the, I'm gonna show you two main lights today that I'm using for artificial lighting. One is just kind of crazy. It's an LED tracing light. So if you are an artist and you want to, you know, do a little cheating, you can go trace on this bad boy. And then you can, 
Isn't that cool? Look at that. Touch it, it goes up. Touch it, it goes down. Make it a little scary movie. But yeah, these are pretty cheap too. These are probably 20 bucks and they are, for the most part, bright enough to, to get you halfway there. And they're, they're a big light source, which means they can be a, a, a soft light, light source. The bigger the light source, the softer the light. The smaller the source, the harsher the light. So uh, the next light source is a tiny little harsh, kind of harsh LED video light. So this guy, very similar. See how harsh that is? Turn it down some, but it's still like it's still pretty directional and pretty harsh. Whereas this guy over here, it's so big. You see that? I know you can't answer me. So so soft, the light, beautiful. So these two lights together work really well. One can be a soft, bigger soft light, kind of a little spotlight almost, and kind of an accent light. I'll show you in a second. Um, next we have. Um, okay, so you'll see on the on the link is like a vinyl squares, but I went to a big box store and I got these like stone surfaces and they're about four bucks a piece, maybe. Real cheap, but they're great for like laying your stuff on if you're doing a flat lay or something. And you can have a dark one, have a dark one. And I showed you the light one earlier. Great. And so you can have those. Uh, and if you have, you know, a, a light product, you can put on the dark one, vice versa with dark and light. Um, next, we have um, A clamps, which are this, these like A-shaped clamps. And these are these are bread and butter. Things are bread and butter for photographers. You can't have too many of these things around. Uh, I buy the big ones, I buy the small ones, I buy the middle ones here, and you lose them. You, you always lose them every day, but so you just buy more. If you're ever at Harbor Freight or somewhere just like real cheap, get just invest in clamps if you're going to do photography. Um, uh, sorry, here we go. Um, foam core and poster board. Also, two other things you should invest heavily in because you're going to break them and get them all scratched and gross. But and you know what you know what foam core and poster board are, right? But you want you want to have these all the time. And a special little trick trick is take your a clamp, clamp it onto your your little board here, and then it sets up on its own. So if you're trying to put reflect light back into something, you can put a little clamp on the edge, put your whiteboard beside it, and then hands-free, right? Um, and the same goes with the black foam core. If you want to take light away, you do the same thing. Just, it is the opposite. Um, also, number seven or eight, <clears throat> diffusion material. Stuff like this. Or, this is a curtain. It's got a cheap curtain. You know, very great for like if you're using window light, which I recommend to begin with. Um, sometimes it's a super sunny and the light is super harsh, and just a little bit of material like this will take that really harsh light away and make it kind of a nice big soft um, soft box for you. And, and they're, you know, again, super super cheap, but it's a must have. Um, Plexiglass, well, again, you know what that is. Plexiglass is great because you can put things, you can you can stack up, you know, put a stack of books up, plexiglass on top, put your, your object on that, and then you can have stuff on the bottom to kind of add some depth, you know. So I just keep plexiglass around. And if you're, if you're doing like jewelry, you can tape it to the plexiglass and hang it at an angle and have, you know, tack it up there and get it sharp. It comes in handy. I mean, it's like um, it's like the diffusion stuff. You gotta have it. And the, the most important thing that I, I recommend you have for product stuff is what I call my this janky open box. And it's just this thing I made, literally out of scrap wood. Which I know it's like easy to believe. It's just a box. 
And it's literally out of junk wood. I think I found it like in an alley and saw it up. It's just a, you know, it's a box, right? But it's a great way to get into, you, know, you can buy a soft box like this on, you know, whatever, Amazon, but it costs money. And those are kind of soft and they squish. This you can stack stuff on. I'll show you this later on. You can stack stuff on it. You can like light it any way you want to. You can add um, poster board in here to make it a, a you know a, a seamless background. It has a lot of a lot of uses that I'm still exploring, honestly. So it's a pretty exciting time for me. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's my list. That is my gear list. And again, we're gonna we're gonna look at these later on as we go through a demo. But um, right now, I want to give you a few, um, I don't want to say tips or tricks, I want to say a few bits of information about your cameras. So if you will, we're going to be interactive for a second, like web 1.0 interactive. Take out your phone, give you any kind of phone, go to your camera application on your phone, and do me a favor. Just go and... And I'm sure I'm sure most of you all know this. That's I get it. But there are people who don't know it, and I just learned some of this stuff like a few years ago. So there's no shame in that. And you all know if you tap on your screen, you can focus, right? Is that a good is that a good visual? Okay, that's good. So if you tap on your screen, you can focus. And then if you drag your finger up and down, you can increase or decrease exposure, right? So here's the thing I like the best, and it's probably, again, probably obvious. If you tap and hold on your screen, so tap and hold, now you can lock your exposure in your, in your focus. So you can move it anywhere you want, and your exposure is, is locked up. And so that, that makes it handy, especially on a tripod. If you have, um, it's like for example, a really light background, and your um, and your product's in the, in the shade a little bit, then you can lock that on to the product and adjust your exposure. It'll, you know, get you lit properly and you're good to go. And then you can move it around some if you want to too, instead of having it bounce around the whole time. Um, also, and I know this is true because people, people know this because it's a selfie thing, but in your camera application, um, you can use the volume buttons uh, as a shutter release. So, you know, you're, you're selfieing, and instead of hitting the little button on the screen, you hit the little volume button and it's just pop, right? Great. Um, and then, so that, yeah, actually that covers that. So we, we, we know that stuff, right? That's pretty, that's pretty standard. Um, so let's go into the actual information here real quick and then we'll, we'll see, I'll do a demo. Um, the first thing is about lighting. And of course, you know, if you have a nice big window um, that faces north or, you know, south and you get nice light all the time, that's, Perfect. You always want to use window light when you can. It's beautiful. It's free. I mean, you can't really easily replicate window light perfectly. So um, that's always your first choice. Uh, the problem is sometimes, you know, you don't have a huge, big light source like a window. Um, maybe you, you know, live, maybe you live in a bunker. Maybe you just live in a, a place with tiny windows. Who knows? Maybe it's, maybe it's like nighttime. There are times when you got to do stuff at night. So what if it's nighttime and you have to um, take pictures? Well, you know, I'm going to show you how to do that because you have the whole lighting kit, lighting kit now. But if you get a chance and you have a bigger window, use it. It's great. And a good place to start with window light or artificial light is what they call Rembrandt lighting. Rembrandt like the artist, obviously. And so what Rembrandt lighting is, for people especially, but I mean, I think it translates to products or pets, anything. Um, it's when you have, instead of a, a light facing your face directly, it's facing at a 45 degree angle. You kind of see in this picture how the the left side of the face is all in, is all in uh, light. And there's a little triangle of light over his left, his left eye. And that's, that's kind of Rembrandt lighting, 45 degree light. And then what you want to do is put a little, a little kicker, a little fill light on the other side. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a 45 degree angle triangle. Um, and I'll show you this later on too. But what it does, it really shapes stuff. It shapes your face. It'll shape 
a product. You know, it just makes it more three dimensional and more lifelike. Instead of if, if you're having light from the just from the front, it's like a, a flat, you know, boring painting. Um, which can be which can be useful sometimes, but I think for the most part, if you have a product you want to show, if it's 3D, you want to show this 3D and show how it looks in real life. Um, and for a painting, that's different, but you know. Uh, two examples here. These you can kind of see. I hope this comes through. Uh, the left picture was taken with just straight on light from right behind me, window light from behind me. And the one on the right was taken with the window light at a 40 degree angle, so it is a little Rembrandt-y lighting. And I hope you can see how the one on the left is just look flat, you know, just like a almost like a drawing. And the one on the right, you can see the shadows, and you get a sense like your brain kind of tells you your yourself how it's it's you know it's a three dimensional object, and that's kind of the point of this kind of lighting, um, and using more kind of uh, more kind of less. Well, I guess, yeah, yeah, dramatic, dramatic lighting, right? So I think a lot of times we're kind of afraid of, you know, doing anything weird lighting wise, but to me, it adds interest and it adds a little sparkle. And so I think that, to, you know, to have a kind of soft shot in your pocket is great. You want to show your products um, uh, as naturally as possible or as, maybe as accurately as possible. But I would, I would I always say, you know, uh, be a be accurate be kind of uh give them like a, a sweetened accuracy right so make it if it's blue make it blue but also make it like fun and pop a little bit don't just give it you know a boring um you know, you know it's kind of boring it's, this picture is kind of boring because it's really soft diffused light but it's helpful and it's useful so you you know you want to have these in your pocket to show people um what it looks like and it's very standard but then also you can once you have that one picture um that kind of gives you the baseline then you can kind of do whatever you want you know you need one picture that's kind of boring maybe or like this standard and then you can play around and you can do you know you can do whatever you want with the rest of them because they know what the thing looks like so you know i'm not saying these are great but i am saying they're different and sometimes that's enough honestly um uh, so fill in the frame is a pretty, it kind of makes, you know, you probably get it when I say fill the frame, you want to, <clears throat> um, for the most part, you don't want to waste pixels and people's brains with like this empty, vast expanses of nothing. So even with this, and also I'll mention these, um, these notebooks here from our buddies over at Stripe Light, um, our, our neighbors and friends. So, um, yeah, you know, it, if you're doing any kind of um, a product shot like that you want to show in um, in this environment, like not just a you know standard on white shot, that one, you know, it's just kind of um, white on white. But it, it, I would say if you're doing any kind of flat lay or environmental picture, um, and even like a standalone product shot, I mean, just don't waste too much space for no reason. Uh, get in there kind of tight, show folks what they're buying. Um, and it, just, it, it kind of it draws your eye into the actual product um, that, you're, that you're trying to sell. So fill the frame. Okay, the rule of thirds. This is a picture of my beautiful wife, Del Mackey, um, that we did for a, uh, a show about crazy party PPE masks. Um, the rule of thirds basically says you shouldn't, no, you shouldn't, but it's more interesting if you put your subject in um, in one of the thirds of the frame. And so if you dissect the frame vertically or trisect the frame vertically and horizontally, put your subject in kind of one of those uh, intersections. So, for example, here is kind of a grid. And you can kind of see how Dale is in the, the bottom right-hand sector. Um, and if you take it a little further, you know, the... Um, the right, the, whole, the entire right third is basically shadow. And then the bottom left is kind of like this root light stuff and then the entire other, you know, two ninths or whatever is crazy lit forest. So it, it has, it, it's a good example of what you can do um, to your products. Oops, sorry. Um, you know, this is it's a basic fundamental rule. If you have more than one product or more than one thing in the picture, you want to arrange them in a way that um, is is 
you know, just gives you a little, a um, little more interest, I think, you know, uh, things are just right in the middle all the time. It's, it's just boring. No, again, if you're doing a single product shot, by all means do that. But if, but if you're doing a, a you know, a, a flat lay or a, any kind of layered image front to back, I think to try to put one, try to put your subject in one of those thirds there where they intersect. Yeah. Okay. Details. Details. Um, my thing for details is to get close and use like a side lighting or even like a, a backlight, something that washes across the the product um, that that helps to um, bring out the texture in the product. And uh, I'll show you some examples here. I'm going to show you a few more here with stripe light. So you can kind of see that these are all backlit. So that means I'm not backlit. They're they're I'm facing the light source. So I'm here and the light source is here coming back toward me. That's window light. Um, and it just, it, it really kind of, it gives you a sense of depth and you can see the texture. If you blow it up really big, you can see the texture, which is nice. Um, and yeah, just get close. You know, again, it goes to like filling your frame and getting close. Ooh, I'm getting close to my time. Uh, again, detail, um, close up. And the, the side lighting, you can kind of really see the, the that's a ceramic um, teapot. And so you can see what's going on there. Okay, here's a recap. And uh, the last thing I'll say is practice all this stuff. The more you photograph things, the better you'll get. And I guess my overall, my overall theme is once you get good at all these little discrete um, techniques, then you can start looking at pictures you like and you can dissect them and say, oh, that they must have used this technique or that technique. And so then you can go back in your studio, your, your home studio, and you can recreate that stuff pretty easily um, if you get good at it. But um, especially if you're looking at products that are kind of similar to yours maybe, or even stuff that um, just people that you think are really good photographers on, on Etsy, um, it's a good place to start. If you, if you know how they lit it, and if you kind of get their composition, um, you can easily come back with with a lot of these tools and a big window and um, and recreate that style, I feel like. So practice. Okay, that's great. Now we're gonna have a little adventure while I reconfigure things and show you something, hopefully. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get my life in order. Okay, so let me just show you real quick. Get my janky open box, all right? And I have a pre-cut piece of poster board here that corresponds with this bad boy. So you get your little, your little uh, seamless bat drop going here. It's really good if you can put wrinkles all in your backdrop. People love that, I think. And what are we gonna do here? Let's do a picture like this. This I'm just gonna show you a few things here. I'm just gonna show you how the how you can light with these two lights. Is that better? Probably not. Just gonna show you really quickly what you can do with this stuff. Okay. Those are windows. All right, let's see what we got here, guys. Now, if you were to rem Rembrandtly light the scene, what you can do is put this guy over here, close some more windows. See how nice and soft that light is? That's beautiful. And now, on this side, it's all shadow on this side. 
you have two options. Minimum, minimum two options, maybe more. Um, you can take your white, your white poster board, phone core. You see that? Oh yeah, sorry. And I'm using the big panel light here for this first light, panel light. So there you go. Do that. Or because you've already spent money on this little LED light, you don't want to waste it. You get a little bit of like nice fill. And this is where the tripod comes in handy. I have a tripod right here. You can just go around and see how it looks. You know, maybe you want to highlight the top here. You want to go over here. So using these two lights together, you can do, I mean, a ton of different lighting setups. You can even make them super harsh, like this, super soft. Um, one thing I love to do, because this box is so cool, one thing you can do with it is you lay your light on top. How cool is that? Look, perfect. And then with this little guy, turn on low, just get a little, little fill in there, a little fill light. And that's, that's a, um, that's how I use this little box and these, these lights when I, when I use them. Of course I have um, these big strobes that are probably too much for me. But anyway, um, I think that's about my time for this demo. And I think it is time for a Q&A. Let me see if I can get back to where I was real quick. Okay, my goal is to always be the most chaotic presenter or person. So I think I've probably achieved that with this presentation. All right. Okay. Let's go to the Q&A. And we'll see what's happening in there. Okay. Let me... Oh, here we go. Okay, someone asked about, they have artwork um, under glass, and um, I guess how to photograph that with no glare. So if you have, what I recommend, if you have a piece of artwork uh, under glass, you want to light it at a 45 degree angle, and Maybe even maybe even a little further, maybe even a little closer to the wall, because um, that way you won't see the lights in the in the um, the frame. So get really you know get fill your frame, get really close, and just keep keep moving your lights out. You do this. Keep moving your lights out um, until the glare the glare goes away, and it will go go away at some point. And also, I think that even for like paintings. It's it's nice to angle your angle your lights so that there's no it doesn't go straight on the canvas it doesn't like you kind of angle them where they almost touch where the lights almost come together toward each other more does that make sense um, sorry that, that's there, there's so many ways to do that I guess if you don't have lights it's it's really hard honestly if you're if you're shooting stuff like that it's hard to to light under glass with no with no kind of without any kind of light, you know? Okay. Give me a second here. You know, this is like, this is great. I'm learning a new technology. <laughs> um, okay, so here's someone that, oh, well, someone asked about the janky box and it's probably the dimensions. You know, I'm gonna say it's about like that wide by that wide. <laughs> no, um, it's probably a foot and a half square on every on every side, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you if you photograph larger. If you make larger things, make a larger box. If you make if you're doing jewelry, you can probably get a smaller one and be fine. Honestly, um, 
when the hell, oh, yeah, thanks, Melanie. Uh, Sean's Janky Boxes uh, Co. is coming, spring, hopefully spring next year. That's my goal. Um, uh, basic camera, yeah. It, is there an affordable accessory for a basic camera that could um, enhance close-up? Yes. So for any camera with uh, lenses that interchange, you can buy what's called um, um, extension tubes. And they're little tiny little, they go, they go between your camera body and your camera lens. They, they just attach on there. And, um, and th that, makes it, that makes it more macro than it was. So if you have this is standard lens, you can get this little, this little tube and that makes it a macro. You know, if you if you want to even get two, I think you can get two and do it even mac more macro over, right? So you can do that. Um, extension tubes. All right, learning how to scroll. Pretty brief. Okay. Um. Oh man, Susan Caps um, shooting quilts. You know, it's the same, the same thing applies. I just think that, you know, it's like with quilts and stuff, if you want to do a whole quilt, it's going to take you a lot of space and you got to find a space with plenty of light and even light if you want to do it like, you know, or you can get this, I mean, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to need some, apply some strobes, some flashes, um, to do that really well or outside and like, if you, I mean, if you just want to do it like a, a cool product shot, you can do it anywhere you know, outside the shade the shade is nice hang on hang on the side of a building a barn you know just make it nice soft light i would say but if you're going to do it uh, in a studio setting it's going to take some some power all right let's see Doo -doo -doo. here we go i'll try to go to work here Um, someone asked about white, white balancing, um, color balancing. Um, yeah, on a phone, it's kind of hard to, to color balance a lot of times because most phones just shoot JPEGs and it's kind of already, the color's baked in there. I started using Lightroom mobile on my phone and it allows you to shoot like a raw format, even with the phone. Um, and if you have a raw format, then you can just set your white balance like any other camera. So, um, if you want color accuracy, I recommend at least checking out Lightroom. I think it's I think it's free. It requires an account, but I'm pretty sure it's free to, to get that. So um, that's actually a pretty good option, I think. Um, and also, as far as oh, that's a good question. As far as white balance, they make um, what's called gray cards, um, and they're really cheap. They're cardboard cards, but you can find just anything that's like really uh, like uh, non-glossy, a flat material, it's medium gray, and get that get a picture of one of those cards before you get your product shot or after. And that way, that'll give you kind of a reference color for the rest of your shots and that lighting. So you can click on that gray card and that should give you a pretty, a pretty close color you know, profile. If you're lucky, who knows? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Someone said, what do I do when the products are bigger than the box that I have? Uh, you know, I would say again. I would just get a. I'd do. I'd make a bigger box if I if I um, was doing larger larger stuff. Or, you know, it's like you can always find find some other way to do it. This is probably the fastest way for me to do it. But there, you can take your you can take your poster board and tape it to the table, tape it to a wall, make your make your curve, stack stuff on books. I mean, it's like it's just like every professional photographer I know just does, you know. This just have stuff around. They'll clamp something, they'll gaff tape something, they'll put an apple box down. And you know, it's like it's what we all do. It's just like making making do with what's near nearby, you know. Um that, that answer was garbage. I'm sorry. I, just, I lost my train of thought. Um here we go. Craft shows depend a lot on product photography. Should you professionally invest in that or DIY? I would say professionally invest a thousand percent if my contact information is on. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I think that if you, I think that it isn't. It is important to invest in a, an actual camera at some point if your if your livelihood uh, depends on it. Um, I, I think that even a, a cheap point and shoot camera is 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 good enough quality. 
But if you can get even a, a really cheap, you know, Canon Rebel, whatever, uh, even even an older one, you can probably get them for two hundred bucks with a lens. Um, I, personally, that to me is um, it's, it's a big jump in quality over a phone, just because you have so much leeway to work with those files. And uh, you know, phones are great, but they're just not made for everything. They're made for a lot of things. But they aren't made for like super crisp detail and color accuracy and you know I, I think this <clears throat> I think invest in either a professional or um or a better camera and maybe some lessons, you know. But honestly if you just if you just practice really just if you're always practicing, always watching YouTube videos, you'll get it, I think. You can you can do it. Honestly. All right, let's see. Yeah. Do you have a tips for time-lapse photography? I do not. I've never shot a time-lapse <laughs> video in my life. I wish I knew how to do it. That'd be awesome. If you have tips, you can call me. Email me. I'm happy to hear about them because I don't know. That's my, one of my blind, many blind spots. Um, it's my list of items available. I don't see them. By the way, that's a cool... Oh, yeah. Uh, and you mentioned Snapseed. Snap, Snapseed is a lot better than the... There, I think most phone the, iPhone phone... the iPhone camera is... Pretty much garbage. I think that Snapseed's great, Lightroom's great, all this stuff. Let me, um, real quick, again, let me, for someone who asked, I'm going to share my screen uh, just to give you a list of that list from um, that big online retailer that I was so happy to have. Let's see here. Oh, all right. Get there, guys. Hang with me. This is really. Uh, it's really fun, but really stressful for me. So you're awesome. I appreciate your patience. Um, let's see, uh, someone asked me about getting tiles from Lowe's. Or Home yeah, basically, I got mine from Home Depot. They're from Lowe's, but you can get like the vinyl, the flooring, vinyl flooring, the the 12 inch square and like probably 18 inch squares. There, I might recommend those because these these tiles are pretty heavy, and I've already, I've broken a few. And that's annoying. So I think if you um, if you do it, look at the um, the vinyl flooring. Personally, the, the vinyl tiles. I think that's pretty pretty handy. Um, the the best easiest. Um, I don't know, I lost it. Oh, okay, uh, I'll give you a link here. Um, bear with me, everyone, please. I'm gonna grab that link to products for you all. And we'll do. You just watch me um, use my computer for a second. Or just use your email. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Also, I should tell you guys my email address is um, Sean. And that's S H A W N at pointerphotoco.com. And um, pointer is P O Y N T E R. Let's see here. Oh yeah. You know what? That's a good idea. I'm like, I'm gonna leave with you. Okay, here's my email address. If you have any questions, you can always email me. And within probably within at least two months, I will email you back. That's my official guarantee. Um, no, I'm kidding. I will, I will email you back as soon as possible with anything I can help you with. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Do I offer product photography packages? Not really packages. I'll, I will shoot almost anything. So if you have something, just email me and we'll figure out a, a fair price. I don't really, that's not, like, that's not really a, a, a core part of my business, but I, I love doing studio stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, give me a shout. We'll, we'll figure out something fair for both of us and we'll go from there. Um, here's, a, here's a good question. The best easy learning, uh, learning curve software for editing, um, if you use a, a rebel, but, uh, good question. You know, I love Lightroom. I think Lightroom on your computer is really great. It's not the easiest, but it's not the hardest. Um, the hardest is Lightroom or Capture One, play Lightroom. Um, so, I don't know, man, I, I, there's a, there's a, a kind of a new program called I think it's called um, 
shoot, it's not aperture. It's something similar to that. I should know this, I'm sorry. Um, maybe it is called aperture. Um, try aperture. But if, if that's the case, that's probably the best one because it's really cheap and it's really easy. Um, it's kind of new, so it's really untested, but I'll give it a shot, I think. Okay. All right, you all. I think. Did I get the clue? Well, I think I got everyone. If not, I apologize. And if you, again, if, you, if I miss you and you have a question, please email me. Um, this is really, really fun talking with you all. And um, yeah, thanks for uh, bearing with me. I really appreciate you all. Thank you.